everyone. Welcome into My Chamber TV with the heartbeat of the Tampa Bay community. I'm your host, Barbara Marville Kelly. Thanks for joining us. And we are at Marlins Title right here in Safety Harbor. Our first guests, two guests, happen to be Jeannie and Ryan Merrick. Welcome to the show today. Yeah, we you. have some exciting things to share in our segment with you two. And I always love talking housing industry, things that center around your home, because after all, that's our sacred space. That's our nest, right? right. However, we've had some challenging times and you're here to really kind of give a better twist to it and help people feel comfortable in making some informed decisions. So we're going to be talking about mortgages, Embassy Mortgage Group, which you've been in this business together for a good little while, right? Yes. Yeah. We've been uh, in business for 26 years. Yeah. So that that's what you want. You want to talk to people that know what this is all about. So I'm going to turn this over to you guys back and forth and just let's talk about what do we as home buyers or home sellers, what do we need to look for in this crazy market that we're in today in 2023? So I think we need to look for the values in the properties. Um, okay. We have to understand that uh, in Florida, especially, home values have gone up because Florida is uh, a popular destination uh, for, for the economics and, and the lifestyle. Um, one of the things that people need to pay attention to is that over time, um, we've got databases that look at interest rates. And for the past 40 years, uh, interest rates have been uh, in, in the trough that they're in now, which is, you know, uh, you know 6% range. Uh, these are actually normal interest rates. And what we saw during COVID with the 3%, 4% rates uh, was not normal. And it's not something that we would likely see again. Sure. So I think it's important to people to be educated in that. What are normal rates? Well, normal rates, if we look back historically, are 5 6 7%. Those are normal interest rates. Um, so we have to kind of recalibrate our, our thoughts about mortgages and payments and understand that this this is normal and it's uh, the ability to uh, accept that and then work with a, a seasoned mortgage broker to help you define what is your budget and a good mortgage broker is going to help you uh, stay within your budget uh, they're going to be mindful of, of the expenses um, the maintenance uh, real estate taxes we know that those are going to adjust up and down uh, so one of the things that we like to do is educate a borrower on what's their payment today, mm -hmm. but also what's the payment going to be next year? Because we know the taxes go up with a higher purchase price. Um, so I like to let my customers know payment today, what's the payment next year, and then what's the payment the third year if they have homestead exemption. Mm -hmm. So that way they're comfortable and confident and that not only can they afford the payment today, they can afford it tomorrow and they can afford it the next year. And that's really important for a first time home buyer. And that's a lot of good common sense. Yeah. Would you like to add to that? Also, uh, it's important to work with an experienced loan officer. We have a team of five and everyone has at least 20 years experience and we're mortgage brokers. So that gives us the chance to work with a vast array of lenders and underwriters. We have many options on our loan products and we will take the time. We'll do a free consultation and coach our clients along as we work together so they can achieve their homeownership dreams. That's great. Uh, you were mentioning about some of your special products that you have just before we did the segment. Can you tell us a little bit about that and tease you out there? Yes, uh, we do have some special products, uh, especially for a first time home buyer. We have the first time um, home loan and Ryan, uh, it can expound on that information. Yeah, yeah. Like I mentioned, you know, the, the first time home buyer is actually the, a customer that could use a, a, a seasoned mortgage broker like Embassy Mortgage. Mm -hmm. um, we're the type of loan officer that, uh, with our experience, we're not stuck in how do I do a loan, how do I put together a loan. We've done that for twenty years. Mm -hmm. So then we that's our base. We know how to do loans. Uh, so then we can spend our time more with uh, uh, consulting with the customer. Um, again, I like to look at their budget. I like that one of my first questions is, uh, what do you want for a mortgage payment? And then from that mortgage payment, I can kind of reverse engineer what uh, purchase price should they be looking at so they can stay within that budget. 
Um, so some of the cool things for first time home buyers is that many of them qualify for low down payment. Some of them will even qualify for a reduced interest rate and mortgage insurance rates. And then there are even some of those which would qualify for down payment assistance. So that can be, uh, in some cases, you know, 5% of the purchase price that could help them with, um, with down payment and closing costs. Of course, there's some limitations um, to how much they can get and, and the qualifications, but there are programs out there that can certainly help a first time home buyer. Um, and as I uh, mentioned before, uh, it's, it's the first time home buyer that really could use our service. So I think a lot of buyers, uh, especially a first time home buyer, think that a mortgage is a mortgage. And I like to use an analogy of a McDonald's cheeseburger. They all make cheeseburgers. California cheeseburgers, the same as a Florida cheeseburger. So let's say you're going out for your birthday and you want to go have a cheeseburger on your birthday, a birthday dinner cheeseburger. You can choose to go to McDonald's and you know you're going to get a cheeseburger or you can choose to go to a steakhouse and get a steakhouse cheeseburger. Uh, buying a home is a special event. It's usually the largest transaction a person will make. And I just ask the question, if you have a special birthday, um, do you want a McDonald's cheeseburger or do you want a steakhouse cheeseburger? Do you, do you want uh, uh, to go to a place where you know that it's highly likely that you're going to have a great experience? Mm -hmm. So, um, so I really like the first time home buyers as a chance to help them understand the process, uh, make them comfortable and confident in the transaction and, and show them that it's actually fun. You know, we can have fun doing this. Absolutely. Yeah. It's a, it's an exciting adventure. We have a couple of minutes remaining. And the one thing that really stands out for me as a seller, a buyer, and even as a real estate agent, some of the things that buyers should be thinking about, not just before they're ready to make a decision, but a ways before that by preparing and setting up good credit, because before agents take anyone out, you need to be pre-approved, right? Right. And not just pre-qualified because depending on the market, depending on what your situation is, you want to talk to, as you said, seasoned professionals that can help give you what you're looking for when you want to go purchase a home. Now, let's talk real quickly because we're, we're getting down to the last 90 seconds here. You had mentioned something. Don't be afraid of interest rates right now, right? Right. Can you just expand on a few seconds on that? Yeah. Um, I think that, you know, the interest rates, uh, as I said, are historically are, are average right now. Uh, we may see lower interest rates in the next, um, let's say, seven to 12 months. So, um, but at the same time, we're going to see home prices continue to, to have a slight rise. So there's a trade-off. Do you want to allow home prices to come up, uh, which means you're paying more and have a more, higher payment? Um, or do you want to wait until the interest rates fall? And I kind of think of it as uh, being in New York City in, in a taxi cab. And if you've ever been to New York City and driven in a taxi, they never like to stop. They like to keep moving. Mm -hmm. So it's like, do you want to put your life on hold or do you want to keep moving forward and meeting your goals? That, that is very well point. Mm -hmm. I, absolutely. I, I agree totally with you on that. And so if you're thinking of purchasing a home, you know, talk to these folks and see what you need to do. Um, if you're wanting to do something right away, I mean, why wait? Yes. Why wait? If you can put together a program with seasoned professionals that can show you how to do that. You guys are great. Thanks for being Thank on you. My Chamber Thank TV. You. Thank All you. right. Good luck to you. Continued good luck. We'll be right back. More guests. Hi everyone, welcome back into My Chamber TV. We are the heartbeat of the Tampa Bay community. Today we are at Marlins Title, right down here in Safety Harbor. My next guest happens to be Mr. Michael Mattingly. Oh, yeah. Michael is owner of Easy Breezy AC. You know what? That is just so inviting. Just like it's a happy place, I can Absolutely. tell. So how long have you been in business? 
Well, I've been in air conditioning 28, going on 29 years. Uh, I've owned Easy Breeze AC since 2019. Very nice. So what made you go into that business? Uh, well, actually, my background is in finance and um, started uh, investigating doing a, um, a business plan for a neighbor of mine who owned a small mom and pop air conditioning company. Started looking at the numbers and I was like, man, this is really a good business to be in here in Florida. Well, that was a nice mix. <laughs> very, very nice. So what makes you different than all these other air conditioning companies here in Florida? Well, you are correct. There's quite a few different air conditioning contractors. So one of our philosophies is we're trying to bring a white glove service to a blue collar industry. Mm. So we've got several different things that are different about us. Um, I won't get into what we do differently on our install process, uh, but just as far as you know, a business. We do have an industry specific software. So when I'm coming to your house, you're going to receive a text when I come out there. Mm -hmm. uh, we are uh, responsible as far as uh, environmentally. So we are paperless. So I'm going to take pictures of everything that we're discussing when my men are out there. And then we're going to email you that. Um, I'm not married to one manufacturer. Uh, you want to talk about replacing your air conditioning system. We're going to find out what, you know, is attractive to you. And then we're going to give you options. It could be the same manufacturer with three different efficiencies, or it could be three different manufacturers. Uh, another thing as far as trying to be corporately responsible too, is we like to give back to the community. So something that we do first time we come to your house, I'm going to offer you a $20 discount off of our services. If you give me two cans of food or dry goods, that I would then will take to one of the local food banks and nice. distribute to them. Very nice. I love what you said, white glove. That gets my attention because that automatically sets you uh, cut above the rest, I would say, it, with just what you've shared with me because trying to find oh, contractors out there to do work and to do it right, do it well, give the options and be there when you say you're going to. So that really gets my vote for yes, sure. And when it comes to air conditioning, can you give our viewers a few little tips on maintenance for one thing mm -hmm. and what to look for when they're when they're shopping for an AC? There's a lot of people getting taken advantage of. That does happen. So the biggest thing I say when anybody calls and says, air conditioning's not working right, the first thing I say is, have you recently changed your cleaner filter? <laughs> air conditioning is all about airflow. Yes, and yes. if air can't pass through that filter, the unit's gonna freeze up. You think you have a big problem and obviously it's just an airflow issue. Um, the other thing is it is the biggest appliance in your home, biggest user of electricity. Mm -hmm. You are gonna wanna maintain that system at least once a year. All of your warranties now on the manufacturers require once a year maintenance to keep their, you know, their warranties intact. Ah. But just once again, it's the biggest appliance in your home. So sure. uh, having the proper charge, having the capacitors, and that's one thing when we do an inspection, we're not doing a visual inspection. We are actually measuring the microfarads of your capacitors. It's rated from the manufacturer what those specs should be. We're going to give you that report, as I say, in a photo documentation. And then we also have a color-coded inspection sheet that is easy to read. That's one thing in the industry, been in it so long. You know, I managed a group of guys, and I could barely read their handwriting sometimes. So I know the sure. homeowner couldn't. Sure. So sure. our inspection sheet's very easy to read. And as I say, it's color-coded. If it's green, everything is checking out perfect. If it's yellow, it's something that you really need to keep an eye on. And if we code it red, it's something that we really think you need to take, you know, action on right away. So that sounds like the gold standard <laughs> that I just noticed there on the screen. And that's what you're describing so that there's nothing left unsaid or undone. And you give that red flag to the homeowner and it's up to them. And especially when it comes to the warranty. Are you hearing that folks out there with your warranty? What happens if you aren't maintaining it for a couple of years? Well, you know, it's preventative. So a lot of times, mm -hmm. like I say, that capacitor measuring, you know, it's amazing. Um, if a capacitor is 10, 15% off, your system's not running as well as it should. It's right. probably costing you more money on your electric bill every month. Um, and there's other things too, that like when we do an installation, we are measuring static pressure, which is the airflow that goes through your duct system. Mm -hmm. If that static pressure is not right, that system's not getting enough airflow, it's causing the blower to work harder than it should. So there's a good possibility that that part's going to fail prematurely because it's working uh, beyond what the manufacturer thought it was going to. So that's why, um, you know, we really want to make sure that install process is correct to begin with because, you know, that ensures ongoing sure. performance of that system. 
Um, and things you were talking about as far as what to look for too, you know, efficiency is the biggest thing. So air conditioning is the biggest user of electricity. The higher the efficient system you buy, the lower it uh, makes your electric bill. It uses less power. So mm -hmm. you're paying a little bit more money for that system today's dollars. But over time, you know, you never know when the power company is going to raise their rates. So if you're lose, using less power at that time, you're saving money in the long run. Most cases I can show that the uh, energy savings is going to pay for that air conditioning system over that 10 year life of the warranty. Of course. As long as you own the home for of 10 course. years. Of <laughs> course. One of the issues I've had in the past, of course, being a homeowner, is uh, getting it plugged up. I want to know, lines. is it vinegar or bleach? <laughs> or well, neither? Well, we say vinegar because, you know, I don't know where your air handler is, how easily accessible it is. If you pour bleach on your carpet, obviously that's not exactly. a good thing, too. So vinegar is something to do. Uh, and the thing, it, it goes back to your filter, too. Having the proper filter, anything that gets past your filter is going to get on your evaporator coil that is eventually going to rinse down into that drain line and inevitably Murphy's Law is going to clog it up at the worst possible time. Yes. There are safety float switches that we put on that shuts yes. that unit off mm -hmm. so it doesn't pour water all over your ceiling or mm -hmm. carpets. Uh, but that is something that is part of our maintenance as we uh, suck that out. Part of our install process is we run a chemical through your drain line to eat all of the organics that may be in there. And it doesn't do anything to the plastics, but it eats all those organics away so that that drain line is free and clear. Another reason to have your maintenance done. Yeah, One it really our... does. It comes right back to maintenance. Now, speaking of that and changing filters, mm -hmm. there's all these ads about these ex expensive sure. ones. And then, then you hear them talking about the lower priced ones. What is, just tell our viewers, what's the best way to make an intelligent and informed decision on just changing an air filter? <laughs> well, the more expensive filters are a pleated filter and they have a higher yes. MERV rating. So what's a um, MERV rating? Well, that is how much particulate the filter is taking Ooh, out okay. of the airflow. Okay. Uh, so the higher the MERV, the more particulate it is, the more you have to watch that filter. Because once again, it's airflow. Yes. If that filter yes. is clogged, so I tell everybody, when you get your electric bill, check your filter. Even if you have the quote unquote three month filter, if it's clogged, it's clogged. Yeah. Change the filter. Uh, some of the cheaper filters, once again, be in the habit of changing that once a month. Even if it doesn't look dirty, right. it probably needs to be changed. Right. And then something we talk about with our install process is they do have a filter that's a once a year filter, depending on you know how many pets you have and if you have mm. hardwood floors or carpet. Oh, you know, carpet yeah. is a filter <gasps> yes. in and of itself. Yes. Um, but it's a once a year filter that goes on the air conditioning. So some houses have returns in multiple rooms. So people sure. are changing out multiple filters. If you put a filter at the air conditioning system on install, you can change that filter once or twice a, a year. Wow, that is a that is a wealth of information. Okay. And you know, that's what you want when you're going to be changing out your AC. And keep in mind that AC is going to be a big component in selling your home. So wouldn't you agree? Absolutely. Yeah. That's something too. We look at warranties that are transferable. There are a couple yes. of them out there. Yes. Most of them are five year to the original, uh, I'm sorry, five years. The original purchaser gets an extension of five years. As soon as they sell that home, it goes back to the five-year uh, manufacturer's warranty. And they do look at public records to make sure who owns those homes nowadays. Of course. Well, I want to thank you, Mike. <laughs> Absolutely. And if you want to give Mike a call and see what it's all about, please feel free to do so. And great having you on My Chamber TV. Stick around. We'll be right back with more guests. Hi everyone, welcome back into My Chamber TV. I'm your host, Barbara Marville Kelly. And with me, our next guest happens to be David Payloff with the Humane Society of Pinellas. And I wanna talk about this. I wish we didn't have to, but I wanna hear all about, you. you've been there for a good couple of years, right? We have, we've been there for, it's our 75th year. Wow, yes. wow. So what made you do this? Was it just pitter-pattering on your heart? Is y that it? Yes, I've always been an animal lover. Aww. Yeah, I had uh, I spent 20 years in public safety uh, prior to my animal welfare uh, 
career, we'll call it. Okay. And uh, I had some things, some disasters that occurred that affected uh, the animals and the oh. community that I was working in at that time. Mm. And uh, I worked with those organizations and fell in love with the, what they were doing. So mm. that's how I, I stumbled into the animal welfare. Mm, I think it, it was more than a stumble. That's, uh, yes. That, it, yeah. was, it sounds like a real deep passion. Yeah. So so tell me how, how it works. If somebody's thinking of adopting a pet, what, what do we do? And, and we also want to let everyone know where exactly you are. Yeah, so we're at 3040 State Road 590. Okay. Basically the corner of McMullen Booth and 590. Oh, that's right around the corner here. Right, right around the corner. Very yeah. good. We are under construction though, so it, it looks like we may not be open, but you pull in a driveway and drive down the hill and you've got some buildings back there and we are open uh, Wednesday through Sunday. So who who's over there? Who's residing there right now? So we have roughly 30 dogs on site and 20 cats on average. We have a lot more in foster homes. And that's a reduced number because of the construction project that's ongoing. Sure, sure. Uh, but they are typically ready to go. Our website is live. So if you're looking for an adoptable pet, it's basically updating every couple minutes. So really? Something, yep, and we're nice. first come, first serve. So, okay. you know, as if, if, if a pet gets adopted, then that website gets updated there shortly after. Okay, so the, the pets that are coming there, I, I, they probably all have a completely different story with them some sad, maybe some not so sad. Um, what is required to come in and adopt a pet? Uh, not not too much, right? So if you come in, we're first come first serve. You come in, you'll meet with a counselor. Okay. And we, you know, based on that conversation uh -huh. with the potential adopter or visitor, uh, we'll try to match them up with the, the right pet for their lifestyle and what they're looking for. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. well, that makes a lot of sense, absolutely. Yeah. So you must have a, a, a wide range. You have puppies? We do have puppies. Do you? We do have puppies. Those should be coming up here shortly in the next couple of weeks. They're not quite old enough to uh -huh. get adopted yet. Okay. You know, we have to hit a certain mark and a certain weight for them to get their surgery, get sterilized and get their vaccines because all of our pets go home with up-to-date vaccinations, microchip. Okay. They're, they're sterilized, uh, otherwise healthy, right? Okay. To, the best, to the best of our ability that of we course. know of uh, before we send them home. And the charge? Our, our prices vary, right? Okay. We like to call it more of a, a donation. Donations, right? We okay. are a nonprofit. Um, of course, those adoption fees or donation adoption fees mm -hmm. uh, don't even come close to what it, you know we put into these pets. Um, so we're always constantly looking for you know, assistance from the community because we are community funded. We're yes. a community organization, we're community funded. So, um, but our, our, our fees vary based off of okay. you know the size and type of, of the pet. That's true because you have little ones, big ones, medium sized ones. That's right. uh, do you get pedigree, mixed breeds? I guess you get everything. We get everything. We ah. get everything. Yes, everything across the board. So um, you know, and again going back to what you had said before, they all have different stories, right? So we don't know what they are coming in. Typically yeah. nine times out of ten they're coming in as, as strays from our municipal partner over at Pinellas County Animal Services or one of the other municipal shelters in the, in the Tampa Bay region. And we don't know their stories. Mm -hmm. You know, they're presented. They can't tell us what happened to them. Mm -hmm. So we're just mm -hmm. fixing them as best we can within our ability based on what they're presenting with. Exactly. Do you know offhand what you have right now with those puppies coming in? They they are they are all American mutts. All American all mutts. All American mutts. That's what I grew up with, right? That's right. We, many years ago, and sometimes you know they're they're the best. They make the best. They yeah. yeah. And do you find that animals when they're rehomed this way that there's just something special about that relate? They know, don't they know? They do know. Yeah. Yeah, I firmly believe that they do know. Uh, you know, I have I have two rescues at home. I had four at one point. I'm mm -hmm. down to two. Um, that probably won't last very long. Oh. Right? You, get, you get involved in this world, you know, you, you always yeah. have a full house, right? Whether it's fosters or you're a foster failure, right? right. And you end up adopting right. them yourself. But uh, yes, I do feel like they are more appreciative. I mean, that could be a, a psychological thing within ourselves, right? <laughs> I think so. You know? I think. Well, we know but too. We know. There's a communication yes. there. They And they do. I, I, I mean, they just communicate in their own way. You get to know one another. I'm not sure how much time we have left, but I, what I did want to ask you is for somebody that wants to adopt a pet, what would you? What are some of the little tidbits that you can share with them ahead of time without obviously giving them the, sure, you know, the whole skinny because you don't know. You don't know what the story is. That's right. What would you say to the first time, like a first time home buyer, a first time pet owner? Do you prefer having? Um, 
whether it's foster parents or whatever, do you prefer them to have been a pet owner in the past? Maybe they've lost a pet. What's, what's some of the scenarios? So you get a picture sure. on, on what they're looking for. Yeah, absolutely. So what does your lifestyle look like? Ah. Right. What are you working full time? Are you, that's right. Are you work. Do, do you work ninety hours a week in your home? You know, yeah. five hours a day. Right. Um, that may be something to consider. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, are you? Do you have? Are you an exerciser? Right. Are you a runner? Mm-hmm. You know, those are all things that would come into play. Do you have little children? Right. Mm-hmm. Do you have small kids? Do you have teenagers mm-hmm. or adult kids still living at home? So I, I always uh, encourage adopters to to put all those factors in. Now it's not, not up to us to dictate or determine who's ready for a pet or not because right. we don't you know right. it's, it's up to them right. we just try to steer in the best direction based off of the conversation that's what i was getting at because there's no right or wrong yes or no but sometimes people don't think i we waited until i was on a complete day shift when we got our first yorkie right and we waited and i'm like chomping at the bit because i wanted her so bad but it wasn't going to be conducive for the lifestyle with my husband and i both working the hours that we were at that particular time and it makes a big difference because when you do have that quality time with your pets you know that being a a pet owner it it's just a it's just different it is rather than leaving them there by themselves and what's really fun is if you get two together. That's right. Right? That's right. It always It's always more fun when you have two together, right? It makes for a lively household. Oh, boy. But there really is. There, there's a lot of good companionship there. Yeah. You know, dogs are, uh, we'll talk about dogs specifically. They're social creatures. They're pack yeah, they animals are. by nature, right? So they want to socialize. They want to have that interaction. Yes. You know? Yes, they do. That's right. And, and the cats? Cats are the same, right? Cats mm-hmm. are the same. They, you know, that's... The difference with cats, though, they they can be on their own, and they're perfectly happy yeah. being on their own too. Yeah. So, um, but they do love that that social interaction as well. Oh, you know what? We've been through some real interesting years here. With, you know what I'm talking about, yeah. okay? And people are ready to, I think, live more, and enjoy more, and appreciate more. And honestly, what got us through the last couple of years with that C word, I don't mm-hmm. even want to give it the energy. I know I, it. Was our pets. That's right. They're they're like our life coaches. We've got two Yorkies. Yeah. They're bonded. They grew up together. And we re- rehomed them from a breeder. And it is a little bit different. It, it really is. But they just are so loving. And we all need that today. We do. We so. do. We need that companionship. And when you, when you talk about the, the, the evil C word, right, where we're all stuck at home, oh. we saw a huge intake and our uptick did you, did you of, of pets going home to homes and yeah. fosters stepping up. You know, it's yeah. just quite the opposite. Our yeah. shelters were not nearly empty, but close to being empty. But unfortunately, now we're seeing just the opposite with, you know, world getting back to normal. some degree need, of normal. That's right. We need the community more than ever now. I, I'll tell you, I want to thank you. You're doing God's work. You are. And you know you are. And remember, thank dog you. spelled backwards. <laughs> Get over there and adopt a pet. Why not? Right. That's a right. cat or a dog or one of each. Thanks for joining us. We'll be right back. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Welcome back into My Chamber TV. We are the heartbeat of the Tampa Bay community. I'm your host, Barbara Marville Kelly, and we are here at Marlin Title. And our next guest happens to be a lovely lady. I hope I say <laughs> your name right. It's Ekaterina. You can call me Kat. I can go. Oh, I probably didn't get it right. So, okay, Kat, <laughs> welcome. And Kat is actually with Amar Bay Sweets, which I can't wait to hear all about. We were just talking before the segment and your passion in what you're doing. You've got some experience here and I want you to share what made you get into this type of business? Well, when I was seven years old, we traveled abroad with my mom first and we stayed in this small mom and pop hotel. It was in Turkey and I said, I'm going to have my own. 
Ah, <laughs> at seven? At seven, yeah. Wow. So, which led me later on into education and the hospitality industry. Then I worked at multiple Hiltons uh, in Europe and United States. Then I met Kunal Jain, who is an owner of Marbury Suites. And I said, why don't we try something? And here you go, since last September, we are working on updates in Marbury Suites. <gasps> that is exciting. And, and you were mentioning a little bit on the updates and what's going on. And we want to talk about that and sure. about the awards, too. Of course. So um, uh, Marbury Suites has been in Safety Harbor since 1942. Mm -hmm three times older than me. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the previous owners, they didn't do much changes. Mm -hmm. So once we took over, you know, we noticed that the carpets are kind of old, you know, the paint needs to be updated. Sure. So we started updating the rooms and um, you can see the pictures. They are all in the brand colors. So teal, which is uh, sea color and yellow or gold, which is Sunshine State here Very in Florida. Florida. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So we have dates in that. And um, seems like people love it. So last year uh, we got um, uh, the award. It's Hospitality Award of Traditional Florida Hotels. And it's international award and they run it by different um, Areas they have Americas, they have Europe, Southeast Asia, and stuff. So we were one in Florida. Uh, we also got award for um, excellent service from Booking.com, and um, uh, we were uh, nominated as super host on Airbnb. Uh, that you know that's really cool to think about. So what would you say to our viewers out there today if they're doing some planning? And here's just a sample of the awards. It's awesome, awesome. Tell yeah. us about it more. Well, uh, I think what people are missing, and it's based on my experience too, mm -hmm. in corporate hotels, they're missing personal touch. Oh. Bingo. Personal they want, touch. They want someone to come and like, you know, I call it morning visitations and evening visitations. I mm -hmm. have every single guest coming over and saying, hey, you know what we did last night? So what should we do today? I'm like, well, I like this place or go there. And then we talk and they just enjoy this, even if it might be not perfect and it doesn't have this amenities, which each property like Hilton, Marriott, Hyatt will have. But it's so personal that, you know, Mm. We, they just enjoying it oh look these are great photos very very nice very personalized this is and you know what i think sometimes when we're going on vacation where mm -hmm. we're staying or whatever we want that little touch of home still with us exactly right? and you know what i find funny like you know i have guests like cooking dinners for me they're like well we we want you to go home and don't think about work so just this is for you i'm like okay <laughs> And they will record the videos and they're like, well, we want to share this, you know, and everyone is coming back, which I think means a lot, too. It hasn't been even two years, but people are already coming back. The same returns. Yeah. Yeah. Well, when they have a great experience, that's, you know, that speaks for itself. Yeah. So what else can you tell in the next under five minutes? Well, um, I also wanted to mention that we host some events. So okay. the property is Good. almost two acres. Ooh. Yeah, so the hotel by itself is uh, eight rooms, but we have one and a half acres of outdoor space. Mm -hmm. uh, so we did the event for the chamber, happy hour connections. We did have a birthday party for kids. They had some water slides and they had blast. Nice. Yeah. So, oh, look at those yellow walls. You talk about Florida. <laughs> yep. <laughs> nice. That'll wake you up for sure. <laughs> yeah, and the new new floor as well. And all the rooms have the kitchenettes. So people can stay either for a couple of nights. or so we had people who are staying for months or two months, especially during the um, winter times. Mm -hmm. So they can cook and enjoy itself. Mm -hmm. That They're very spacious rooms. Now, the, this is the king suite. That's correct. Yeah. Okay. That's what we're showcasing here. Wow, that is really nice. Nice video to show what you can be getting into. Yeah. And, you know, I'm thinking, too, when families want to get together yeah. or maybe having reunions mm -hmm. and things of that nature. Yeah. Absolutely. And I had a few requests of people asking, like, you know, can we book the entire property? Mm -hmm. Of course you can. But if they want to have a private space, we also have um, two four-bedroom homes in the area. Oh, yeah. So which they can rent. They have their private 
party, private event and stuff. Mm -hmm. Look at the grounds. The grounds are really beautiful. Yeah. Now, where is that exactly here in Safety Harbor? It is in Safety Harbor, yes. It's uh, on Felipe Parkway, five minutes walk from Felipe Park. Oh, perfect. Perfect. Yeah. I know. That is beautiful. It I've been is. there. Yeah. That is lovely. So Dolphins, it really makes it birds. nice and close by. Yep. And not too far from the beaches either. Not too far. Not too close, but not too far. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, you must be thrilled with what you're doing, this this new venture. It's, Absolutely. It, you're just beaming with it. <laughs> what are some of your favorite amenities over there? Well, we did the mini golf. Okay. Which is kind of cool, like, you know, because I have a lot of people, they come in and like, wow, mini golf. <laughs> then uh, we do have a grill as well. So, you know, we have a lot of people who okay. would, you know, come in, stay overnight or a couple of nights and they will make a grill and then like again, uh, they share between each other. And I mean, I like organizing events too. I think it's a lot of fun. Like, you know, when you bring people together, we do have um, uh, some exercises for our guests as well. So we partner with uh, some local coach so we can do, um, like it's not yoga, but it's high intensity interval training. Mm -hmm. And you can come in like at 8.30 to do workout and you know, I'm at work and I'm working out. <laughs> <laughs> That's really great. Oh, it's very lovely. Look at the yeah. grounds there. Beautiful. Well, and, and so it, are you starting to get more busy or have you been busy for a little bit now? We have, yes. Good, yeah. So as good. I mentioned, we have only eight rooms and uh, with people getting to know us, we are sold out pretty much every day. Uh, that's what I was going to ask you next. Yeah. What kind of time frame, depending on how much how long people want to stay mm -hmm. do they need to book like a month out two months out or can they come on the spot it depends depends of course uh, yeah. timing is everything <laughs> right? timing is everything so if we're talking about winter months january february march going into april mm -hmm. a lot of people are booking right now mm -hmm. uh for summer months it's a little bit more flexible and again mm -hmm. if it's saturday friday saturday then I'd rec I always suggest people to book ahead of time. If it's weekend, weekdays, it's a little bit easier. Mm -hmm. Well, it makes a lot of sense, and it sounds like you do enjoy your job. And you have a great personality for it. You make me want to come over there. Let's go. See what's <laughs> She's ready to go, right? Those yellow walls are just so bright and lively and with the activities that's going on. Yeah. Well, I want to thank you so much for coming on the show here, Kat, and I, I love your <laughs> Thank you. Listen to you all day long. You know, the thing is, is that when people are planning to go somewhere, they want to spend their money wisely. Mm -hmm. And to be able to have a room like that, that we, they were just showing, and you've yeah. got different sizes, right? Yes, we do. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So that was the king. Is there a queen, too? We have queen. We have a full family suite, which can accommodate four people and have a full kitchen so they can cook there. And I have a lady there right now staying for two months because mm -hmm. she can cook and she feels herself like home. And you can save a lot of money. Thanks, Kat. <laughs> thank right. you, Barbara. And thank you. We'll be right back. Hi there, everyone, and welcome back into My Chamber TV. We are the heartbeat of the Tampa Bay community. I'm your host, Barbara Marville Kelly, and we're actually hosting here at Marlins Title, and we happen to have Anthony Steele with us to talk about title insurance. We have some exciting times with real estate, to say the least, right? Absolutely. Do we not have to be on our toes? We have to be on our toes every day. So let's talk about title insurance, sure. especially for someone that is interested in buying or selling a home or both. That's correct. Well, title insurance, many folks ask, what is title insurance? Title insurance is a policy that protects the home buyer as well as the mortgage lender mm -hmm. from damages or financial loss that may occur due to a defect in title or a problem with title. Okay. And so our job, and quite frankly, we call it a peace of mind 
when you policy for a title insurance policy. I like when you say that peace of mind because when it comes to buying or selling, I mean, the stress of all of that, uh, it, it takes it through the roof. So when you have that peace of mind, let's talk about title insurance and some of the different components on it. Mm -hmm. Who actually chooses the title insurance, the buyer or the seller? Well, quite frankly, it depends. Ah, it okay. It depends on it contractually, the buyer or seller has the right to choose title. Okay. There are contractual conditions that go along with uh, who chooses title. Mm -hmm. But in this area of Florida, customarily, the seller selects title. Okay, very good. So we want to keep that in mind because I know there's many of you out there, real estate's coming back. It's not, you know, don't be too afraid, okay? Especially when you have somebody like yourself that That's can correct. educate everyone out there. Now, a couple of questions for you as well. Who pays for it? Again, it uh, depends contractually. It depends okay. on who selects title. There you go. Uh, there is some components that come along with uh, the selection of title mm -hmm. uh, that is covering the policy, the owner's policy, as well as some of the title uh, costs associated with the transaction. Now, would you say title insurance is pretty much required? It is required. And most lenders, quite frankly, uh, do require title insurance for their transactions. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're purchasing a, a cash, uh, a property for cash, you don't need to have title, but I would suggest to protect yourself you should. Oh, absolutely. And you know, you see some of these uh, ads on TV about the, uh, the fraud and the this and the that. So, sure. you know, you really want to look into that. How long have you been in business here? Marlin Title has been around since 2004. Oh, very good. Myself, I've been in uh, the commercial banking arena for the last 30 years. And uh, as of 2019, we acquired Marlin Title um, at that point in time here in Safety Harbor. Very nice. Good area, too. Yes, here in it's very much Harbor. so. Yes. We have a, a, a great little uh, place here, and it's right handy to everyone. So what made you get into all of this, the banking? and the, I mean, it goes hand in hand. It, it Quite frankly, it was an opportunity for us to transition my career. As I said, 30 years in commercial banking, commercial real estate lending. Uh, I was very familiar with title insurance, all mm -hmm. of the transactions that I worked on required title insurance. Okay. And so it was a transition, a real quick pivot from commercial banking to title insurance. And so there's a lot to be said for working with someone that does have a tremendous amount of experience. I know that from my own past, my own personal experience, you know, go with someone that knows what they're talking about. What are some of the things that you can share with our viewers, whether it's seller or buyer or both? Just some little tips. You know, as you're planning to purchase homes, mm -hmm. make sure that you have a team of people around you, quite frankly. Mm -hmm. And one of the team is title insurance. Mm -hmm. um, most people customarily will look and, and if you were to ask them who the title agent is, mm -hmm. they won't remember or won't know. So they rely on other professionals to give them that guidance. And so you want to have a team of people around you you want to have a good realtor, you want to also have good title, and you also want to have a good lender. And also you may want to look into having an inspector mm. for the property to make sure everything is okay so it runs smoothly through the transaction. Absolutely, and you're, you're saying some key words here when it comes to, I mean, it, this is a person's home, it could be a forever home, mm -hmm. it could be a retirement home, maybe downsizing, first time home buyers, it's so important to know that you have a team because it's almost like a, a team, a family team exactly. in this business. That's correct. That's yeah, correct. Yeah. It is. And that's one of the, the biggest advice I can give is really surround yourself with people that you mm -hmm. trust and you want to work with and that has your best interest in making sure the deal gets done and everything at the end is smooth. And you're going to know when you have somebody that is looking out for your best interest because it will call to you. They will know the answers and if they don't have the answers, they will get them to you in an expedient amount of time. That's Absolutely. where having someone with experience really really does work well. I'm going to I'm going to put you on the spot here, but it's easy, <laughs> I promise. Can you give can you give a scenario? We've got a few minutes remaining. Can sure. you give us a, a quick scenario on painting a picture on what could go kind of like in a challenging way for a sure. buyer or seller? You know, one of the things that we work on, our job as title insurance agents is to give a free and clear property uh, mm -hmm. to the new home buyers. 
one of the issues here in Florida is uh, having permits mm -hmm. on a property. And we've had to clear some permits that have been around for the last seven to 10 years. Mm -hmm. And if you would go to a homeowner and say, clear this permit or have this permit cleared, they wouldn't know how to do it. And so for us, part of our job is to make sure the property is free and clear of all items and issues out there to include permits. So that's one of the things we look for. We had a situation where there was a seven year permit on an air handler on a property. And the company that installed the air handler, we went back to them and asked them, can you at least inspect it, open a permit, inspect it and close the permit? They said no. And so what ended up happening was we actually went and hired an engineer that went out, they opened the permit, inspected the, the air handler, closed the permit, and it was all resolved. But again, knowing how to do those things is important. You know, there's so much to be said for that because otherwise a person has to, and there's a lot of people that are do-it-yourselfers, and that's fine. Yep. I don't want to do that. <laughs> I want the pros that have the experience that can get the task done, po I mean, as immediate as possible, especially, you know, when you're wanting to get into your home or you want to get out of your home as soon as possible. These are all the things that you want to be aware of and be educated on. And with the pros that has been in the business, how long again? We've been around since 2004. So it's about, uh, 19 years. Yeah, I think you got a little bit of experience to say the least, right? <laughs> what else can you share in this last minute? In this last minute, I would say that, you know, we also had an experience where we refinanced a very large hotel. Mm -hmm. And what ended up happening was when the original builder of that hotel went to the municipality, they asked permission to build and construct the hotel. And the municipality said, sure, absolutely. However, when you build your hotel, the parcel north of you, when that gets developed, you must build a concrete block wall hmm. from side to side, okay. from perimeter to perimeter. And so that was an issue. So fast forward, a second home, a second uh, owner of the hotel came forward, purchased the hotel, and the title insurance company put it as an exception. What does that mean? It simply means if there was ever a claim on that uh, uh, agreement, the insurance company wouldn't pay for it. So fast forwarding, I went ahead, we got the transaction, we looked at it, and we identified the problem, called a municipality, and I simply asked them a question. Over the last quarter of a century, 25 years, has there ever been a change in your policies? Mm -hmm. And they said yes. And that's how we resolved the problem. And it went from a concrete block wall to a couple of trees. Great story. Boy, you got to be able to think on your feet as well. Just a few seconds left. I want to thank you so much for joining us on My Chamber TV and check Anthony out and know your stuff when it comes to buying or selling a home, when it comes to title insurance. We'll be right back. Hi everyone, welcome back into My Chamber TV and featuring the Safety Harbor Chamber of Commerce. I'm your host, Barbara Marville Kelly, and with me happens to be Susan Peterson, who's been with the Chamber for how many years? Almost 10 years. Wow, congratulations yes. on that. And then we also yeah. have Cami, who I'm in, also stepping in and stepping out and taking some full responsibility over there. This is so great. I want to hear all about what's going on with the, the chamber and how you're doing some transitioning. I think you're getting ready to make a change, a life change. I am, yes. I'll be retiring at the end of this month. Um, but I'm really pleased to know that there'll be a smooth transition because cammy has been with us about two years now. Mm -hmm. And she will seamlessly move into my position. That's wonderful. Yeah. Congratulations to both of you. So what have you noticed with the chamber? I mean, they are a real happening chamber, have been for a long, long time with a lot of things going on. And I just love Safety Harbor, the little town we're in. Absolutely. It's a great place to work and live. And Susan's just set me up for success. Absolutely. Of you course. Know, um, big shoes to fill. She's done really great things with the chamber. So uh, I'm pretty lucky to be able to step into this position. 
Well, it, it's like a family. The, the chamber is a family and everyone just collaborates together. You have all these events. Everyone knows one another. And, you know, as a business owner, that's another reason to join the chamber. Let's talk about some of the things that you've been working on over the last couple of really want to talk about better what third friday has been our our biggest you know new event in the last couple of years yeah. that we've put a lot of time and effort into making sure that it's uh doing the right the right things for our businesses and our communities and and we feel really feel like it is it's there's a lot of coordination with that yes because yes. you guys have bands coming in and i mean all kinds of different things yeah well, we've been very fortunate that the businesses are all working together that's yes. been the most, to me, the most gratifying part of that whole event process is to see the town come together. Yes. Because we can't just do it. You know, they have to cooperate and participate, and they have. They love it. Well, we've, we've supported and talked about so many different events, and it just blows my mind, the coordination. And the you have to set these, these dates up. How far in advance? I mean, sometimes a year in advance. The next year for the major events yeah mm -hmm. in fact we just got done talking about setting our date for our next art and seafood which we just had in february we'll be looking at next february to put that on the calendar um of course third friday is always third friday so mm -hmm. we know when that is but uh yeah you have a lot of people that come there too not that don't even live in safety harbor it does draw a really nice crowd yes yeah. yes yes so what are some of your favorites each of you uh, for the last however long you've been there, you've been there 10 years. How's the transition to today? Well, let's see. That's a hard question. Um, <laughs> I don't want hard questions. To me, the gratifying thing is to have an idea about an event and then implement it and see it happen. Yes, yes. Like art and seafood. Um, I wanted to see fine art come to Safety Harbor. You know, you see it in other areas around town or around the area, um, Tarpon and Dunedin and so forth. They have fine art festivals. We never had that, so it was an opportunity to try to make that happen, and it has. So it's that's gratifying. Oh, that has to be. Yeah. And when when did you bring that? that? We just had our fifth year of it. Fifth year, so yeah. very good. Yeah. How about you, Cami? It has to be third Friday. Third I was Friday. part of that. Since Why? The Why are these third Fridays so wonderful? We really, Susan and I, sat down had so many meetings before we started to really make sure that third Friday was all about and for our community and our merchants and being able to see that from start to finish that we, we met the goals we set out to accomplish, you know, as far as uh, making sure that our, our restaurants and bars, they're the ones selling the alcohol. They're the ones selling food uh, so that it can be a big night for them. And yeah. seeing that, I think we both feel that it's been really successful. And like Susan said, just seeing the our downtown businesses really come together and work together to make it mm -hmm. a true community event. And being able to, for me, being able to see that from the planning, you know, to the implementation, it just makes it my, the one that's kind of nearest to my heart. And you do have charity events as well. We do. Yeah. yeah. And that's, I mean, you just, you cover everything over there. And the remarkable part to me about Third Friday is I remember the early conversations where we were so scared that we were biting off more than we could chew, Ooh. you know, because it, it, some people had huge delusions of grandeur of what this mm -hmm. event should be. And we were like, well, wait a minute, we're, we had what, three staff members or something at the time, you know, can we do this? And, but because everybody banded together and helped, um, it, it's working. It so is. We, we just kind of marvel at that all I the know, time. I know. It's, you know, it starts with Safety Harbor itself with all the charm and mm -hmm. the restaurants and, and then to bring it together with all the businesses that get involved. And, you know, if you're a business owner watching and, you ha and you're in the particular area, it's not just about joining the chamber and just expecting everything to happen. It's participation. Absolutely. You know, not, don't just pay your dues, but get involved. Absolutely. We yeah. can offer all of this, but they have to take advantage of it. Yeah, that's right. And if you're an out of towner or you know out of towners, I mean, this is a place to go to find out what's around because you're you're just like in the hub of everything. In Safety yeah. Harbor. And at the same time, we're a little off the beaten track. Mm -hmm. You know, we're not on the Gulf Coast where, you know, people travel up through Dunedin and Harbin Springs. We, you have to kind of know about Safety Harbor mm -hmm. to, to veer off 
And so we're, we're a hidden gem in that respect. So we have to promote ourselves. Um, but it also helps us keep the town a little bit more quaint, maybe. Anyway, that's a perfect, that makes it a good perfect place to live. description. Yes. Yeah. yes, it is very quaint. You've got to find the balance. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And well, you've certainly it's done always that. Always a challenge. Yeah. So is it bittersweet retiring, my dear? It is. It is. I have days when I think, yeah, I'm going to miss doing this. And I have, I love my staff, so I'm going to miss them. <laughs> but you can I'm always visit miss, and go to lunch. Um, well, I told her doing she's, she's going to have to have lunch with me at least once a month. It's a oh, requirement when she retires. So she's still going to be in the loop because I'll put her in the loop. <laughs> Most likely. <laughs> well, when you have a group that is like that, like I said earlier, it's like a family. And the chamber's like a family, so... That's good. That's very good. So you must be exciting. Yeah. And and what is your title going uh, to be? President and CEO. President and CEO. So I can't think of a better fit than coming from you to Cami and taking over. And gosh, it, it's a very social job too because you get to meet so many people. It and, is. And it's just a dream. Fun. It's a fun job. It is. It's a fun job, and it's it's for me. What I always wanted. I wanted to work in my town that I care about, that I live in. Really? I'm a people person. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I interact with people every day. I've worked from home in the past and I did not like that because I just missed the, the, the interaction. People, interaction yeah. with people. So yeah. it really is. I feel really fortunate to be able to work two minutes from home and work in my community and talk with people every day. And you know, it's nice when you do live in the community because you have that personal passion that personal testimonial, mm -hmm. and maybe you have that that leg up on you know somebody else that might be you know commuting to come to Safety Harbor for that position. Yeah. So good for you. I, I just yeah. I love talking about Safety Harbor. I think I left my heart there one time when I first came there, and you just have everything. I can't think of anything you don't have besides a football stadium. But who needs that? It's a quaint yeah, town. That, it's, <laughs> it, it has the charm, and it's a day. It's where you can go and spend like a day. Right. Mm -hmm. And still not see everything or eat at all the all the different restaurants and all. So it is good. Anything you would like to say and your this is gonna be your last show? Yeah, it will be. Yeah. Um thank you guys for giving us great exposure. Oh um, we have love been it. Wonderful for us and I'm excited for Cammy. She's gonna bring a new energy to the chamber and I think she's gonna do great things. So she will definitely can't be more Happy about the transition. Well, thank you, my dear. And thank congratulations you. and good luck to you. Thank good you luck so to you. Thank you. And thank you for joining us on My Chamber TV.